In this video, I will show you how to configure the pins on your BeagleBone Black as SPI pins for Debian 8.6. Now, these steps should also work for Debian 7.11 with minor differences, which I'll point out throughout the video. Also, here I have a figure showing the pins on my BeagleBone that can be configured as SPI pins. And you can access these figures by opening the browser and Type in the IP address of your BeagleBone Black. Here you can see that there are two sets of pins that can be configured as SPI pins. And I'll show you how to configure both. Now let's get started. First thing we want to do is verify that there are no device free overlays exported into our BeagleBone Black. And we do that by printing the contents of the slots file. So cat slots. Also I previously created a variable called slots which points to my slots file. But just for reference, this is the path to my slots file. So you can also do cat and type in the full path to your slots file if you don't have a variable created. Now if you have any device free overlays exported, go ahead and unexport them. And if you're not sure how to unexport device free overlays, go check out my previous video I made on exporting and unexporting device free overlays. Now the reason why we want to unexport some device free overlays is because they might be using some pins that we want to configure as SPI pins. So if other device free overlays are already using some pins and we want to configure those pins as SPI pins, we'll get an error message saying something like file exists. Also for SPI, if you want to use this set of pins 28, 29, 30, and 31, you have to disable your HDMI device Free overlay and for Debian 7.11 I showed how to do that on my previous video of exporting and unexporting device free overlays but I didn't cover it for Debian 8.6 so I'll do that right now to disable the HDMI device free overlays on your BeagleBone black Debian 8.6 open up the following file using vim so vim slash boot slash uenv.txt hit enter and let's use our arrow keys to scroll down now these two last lines probably don't exist in your uenv.txt file and if they don't go ahead and add them now these two lines will be used to disable the hdmi device tree overlay and enable the correct device tree overlay to be able to deploy spi device tree overlays i will also go ahead and paste these two lines down in the description below also another thing that i noted is that after adding these two lines i wasn't able to ssh into my beaglebone black wirelessly i had to connect it directly to my laptop through a usb cable so if you're sshing into your beaglebone black wirelessly after adding these two lines you're gonna have to connect your BeagleBone black through a USB cable now after you add these two lines let's go ahead and save the file by typing in a colon then WQ for right quit hit enter what you need to do every time you change the UNV.txt file is restart your BeagleBone so after you add those two lines and save the file go ahead and restart it by typing in the reboot command now after you restarted your BeagleBone CD into the following file CD slash dev slash firmware actually it's lib dash firm slash firmware hit enter and let's print out the contents of this file of this folder here you can see all the device tree overlays that you can export and unexport and those device tree overlays end with dtvo now if we scroll up we should be able to see the spi device tree overlays which are these two right here now the first SPI buzz is enabled by exporting this device tree overlay and the second SPI buzz is enabled by deploying this device tree overlay. And the pins that map to the first SPI buzz are 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. And the SPI pins that map to the second SPI buzz are 28, 29, 30, and 31, and 42. Now before exporting those device tree overlays, let's cd into the following directory, cd slash dev. Let's clear the screen. And if we look for all SPI files, we shouldn't see any. But after exporting each SPI device tree overlay, we should see two files appear. First, let's enable the first SPI buzz by exporting the SPI0 device tree overlay. And we do that by writing to the slots file using the echo command. So echo, open double quotes, bb-spi dev 0, close double quotes, the direct output symbol, then type in the path to your slots file. So again, I'll use the variable that I created, hit enter. And if we print out the contents of the slots file, we should see that a new device tree overlay was exported. And that's the SPI dev zero device tree overlay. And again, if we look for the SPI files within this directory, the dev directory, 
we should see two new files appear SPI dev 1.0 and SPI dev 1.1 and the first number refers to the bus and the second number refers to the chip select so 1.0 is referring to chip select 0 on bus 1 so pin 20 and 1.1 is referring to chip select 1 on bus 1 so pin 19 and now if we export the other SPI device tree overlay we should see another two new files appear so bb dash SPI dev 1 close double close with direct output symbol and the passage of slots file hit enter and if we print out the contents of the slots file we should see a new uh, device tree overlay appear now if we look for the SPI files within this directory we should see two new files SPI dev 2.0 and SPI dev 2.1 so 2.0 is referring to chip select 0 on on bus 2 so pin 28 and 2.1 is referring to chip select 1 on bus 2 so pin 42 now one thing to note is that because we exported the SPI dev 0 device tree overlay first we can use the SPI dev 1.0 or the SPI dev 1.1 files to configure the pins and because we exported the SPI dev 1 device tree overlay second we use the SPI dev 2.0 and SPI dev 2.1 files to control the bus 2 SPI pins. However, if we would have exported the SPI dev 1 device tree overlay first and the SPI dev 0 device tree overlay second, we would be using the SPI dev 1.0 and the SPI dev 1.1 files to control the SPI pins on bus 2 and the SPI dev 2.0 and the SPI dev 2.1 files to control the SPI pins on bus 1. Now to test that you correctly exported the SPI device tree overlays and that your SPI pins on the BeagleBone are, are working we need to use the SPI dev test tool. Now there are several places online where you can get this tool by googling SPI dev underscore test dot C and this is the one that I'll be using so I'll post the link on the description below. So first go ahead and create two files one called SPI dev underscore test dot C and another one called make file. After you create those go ahead and open each one of these files click on the raw button and copy and paste this whole thing into the SPI dev underscore test dot C and the contents of the make file go ahead and paste it into the make file file that you created after you do that we'll be moving those two files onto our BeagleBone Black and if you're not sure how to move files from your PC to your BeagleBone Black go ahead and check out my previous video I made on how to transfer files between your PC and your BeagleBone Black so I'm gonna go ahead and move them into my home directory under Debian and tools it doesn't really matter where you where you uh, move them to but this is the directory where, where I'll be moving them to. So now let me go ahead and move them. And they should be in my BeagleBone Black now. Now after you have those two files, go ahead and execute the command make. And if you print out the contents of this directory again, you should see a new file, SPI dev underscore test. And that's actually an executable. And to run it, all you have to do is enter a dot slash for current directory, and then the name of the file, and hit enter. Now, before I explain what the output is, let's go ahead and take a look at the SPI dev underscore test dot c file that uh, we downloaded. Two things to note is that the default SPI device is set to bus one on chip select one. So when we execute the command like we did right now by just typing in a dot slash followed by the name of the executable, we were actually controlling these set of pins right here, 17 through 22. Now, if we wanted to control pins 28 through 31 and 42, we need to follow the name of the executable file by the option D and then specify which device we want to control. And another thing to note is that to test these pins with this tool, we need to connect pins 18 and 21 so the MOSI and the MISO pins with a jumper and if we want to test the bus 2 pins we need to connect pins 29 and 30 with a jumper as well and both of these pins are the MISO and the MOSI pins now after you connect pins 18 and 21 or 21 and 30 depending on which bus you want to test you should get this output here on top if you don't have the MOSI and the MISO pins connected you will get all F's like we did back here and if your SPI device tree overlays aren't exported at all you should see all zeros so again right now you can see that my two pins are disconnected so if I print out the value again if I execute the SPI dev test again I should get all F's and after connecting pin 18 and 21 I should see a different value a different output 
So they're connected now and if I rerun the test, I should see that the values changed and they should match what are here in the in the array. Now to test the second buzz, I would execute the same uh, same executable file, but this time I'll use the option D followed by the path to my uh, buzz2 file. So slash dev slash SPI two dot and I can choose a zero or one, it doesn't really matter in this case for this test. So I'll just go ahead and choose a, a zero. And if I hit answer, you should see that I get all Fs and that's because pins 20, 29 and 30 aren't connected yet. So if I go ahead and connect those and execute the same command again, I should get the output, the same output as what's inside this array. Pins 29 and 30 are not connected. So if I execute this command again, this time I should get a different output and it should match what's on the array in the .c file. And if I put in a one, I should still get the same output since the chip select doesn't matter for this example. And that's how you can configure the pins on your BeagleBone Black as SPI pins. In my next example, I'll show you how to configure the pins on your BeagleBone Black as SPI pins to control the temperature sensor on this board. And I'll post a link on the description below of where you can buy this board.